Hello, powerful nonsenses. Hello. What's up? We're back. We are back for episode 129. Yes, it is. Of powerful nonsense. Powerful nonsense. I'm actually really looking forward to this episode. Me too. I've been looking forward to this episode for quite a while. Since we designed the t shirts. The t shirts. Now available. Now at available at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash gear. Gear. I yeah. think that's the, that's the URL. It is that one. Um, yeah, so we're talking about choosing your lens, as Nine. the t-shirts suggest, if you can see them. Sun on that side, and a <laughs> storm of brewing on that side. Thanks, Jim. Just to, you know, no, you might have people who don't... <laughs> who think it's sunny on that side and stormy on that side? And remember our podcast listeners. So, for the podcast listeners, wait. Oh, that's a would, very good point. Thank you for calling would me Would you like to that, describe Jim? what the t-shirts look like so, for the podcast yeah, listeners? So, yeah, so it's a nice white tee. Yes. With a pair of sunglasses, yes. Ray-Bans, I think. Something Although like technically not Ray-Bans not because Ray-Bans. copyright law and all exactly. that sort of stuff. Uh, but they look like Ray-Bans. They're like cheap River Island knockoff Ray-Bans. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that I have anything against River Island. Oh, God, I really <laughs> should stop. A um, product placement. And <laughs> product abuse. placement. Uh, so, yeah, choose your lens, it says. Mm-hmm. Choose at the top above the sunglasses and then... Your lens at the bottom, and then in each lens, see what see what we did there. In each yeah. lens of the sunglasses, on one side there's a beautiful sun, beautiful sun, and on the other side there's a storm of brewing. And for those watching, it looks like I'm just like molesting yourself, molesting my mol- molesting, molesting, molesting. I think is the phrase. But yes, so you can check them out. powerfulnonsense.com forward slash gear. Uh, but we thought it'd be a nice little T-shirt to make, just as a reminder for everyone. Yes. Um, just to kind of like. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more along the lines of this idea. I think it was like Wayne Dyer who sort of said, uh-huh. like, at any moment you get to choose uh, your perspective. Mm-hmm. And I think if you listen to any self-help, motivation, coaching, any of that sort of content mm-hmm. out there, you could probably boil it down to this idea of you have a good life based on your uh, yeah. perspective, ultimately. Yeah. I think uh, Victor Frankl in his uh, book, Man's Search for Meaning, this guy was... Uh, in a concentration camp during the Nazi yeah. during the Nazi takeover, and literally, this guy managed to keep optimism in probably the worst situation any person on the planet would ever have to mm-hmm. be in. And so he always said, I think there's the quote there, if I can remember it. He said, "Between stimulus and response, there is a space. in In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom." And I am rubbish at reading out quotes. I mean, that was that was. Quite good. Was that right? Yeah, that was not bad. <laughs> Just a couple of stumbles, but but it was it was good. It was there uh, for. Uh, it all dramatic. made sense. It all made sense. Yeah, that's good. fine. But yeah, no, I think it's. Ah, Did you just click? That was my sho- my other shoulder, wow. the one that you didn't massage. No. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reference to last week's episode. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, I think it's very very true, and I, I, you know, I for one can attest to this. Me and you always have conversations about the way I look at things and I'm always like I know that I'm looking things at a negative point of view and I often jump to worst case scenario situations in my thinking I had a freak out this morning just on that same basis I went straight to worst case scenario um and made a freak out it's our default setting as humans though we do go for the negative and I think Mm -hmm. people say that is like our uh, like faulty wiring of a, like a brain that hasn't sort of caught up to date. Like we don't uh-huh. have to run away from tigers, etc. anymore. We don't. I have still to... run away from tigers. So would I, but <laughs> luckily there is none around me for several miles. Like, but um, yeah, it's that idea that obviously, as a survival sort of aspect to being a human, you are gonna look for the worst case scenario to, to protect yourself. To protect but yourself, I think exactly. it's now happening in a world where probably actually you can just go next door and pick up your food rather than run through a forest and kill some animal or I mean if you want to go run through a forest and kill some animal then not that we uh, not that we condone killing animals but I mean if that's how you want to get your food then I'm not going to judge you on that no judgment no judgment here no judgment here Um, but yeah so I mean it's just a generally really important thing just to kind of Check in with yourself and, and, and kind of like making sure that you are seeing both sides of the same coin mm-hmm. um, and just kind of questioning whether or not it is, you know, the negative thing that you're viewing as negative is in your mind or if it's a genuine thing. Because sometimes, sometimes it is as a defense mechanism good to go, okay, 
what would be the worst case scenario? Yeah, yeah. How will I deal with it if it is that? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you don't kind of want to be stuck in worst case scenario frame of mind all the time because yeah. that's not healthy. It's not going to do you any good. And I think sometimes it's good to just kind of overlook the worst case scenario and go, okay, I know that that's there, but let me just assume for the sake of my own sanity that actually it's the positive thing. Yeah. Somebody said to me actually recently, and, and it was one that really stuck in my head. Well, actually, there was two lines from the same person really stuck in my yeah, head. They were really, really good. Uh, there was one which was, um, it was like, don't assume that the good stuff is the blip. Don't yeah. assume that it's all rubbish and then the good stuff that happens is the blip. Assume that it's all good and assume that the blip is the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a really good way of framing it. Like, because it's so easy just to go, oh, life's rubbish, and then something's good's come along, so, oh, that must be a blip, so it can only go wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, instead, assuming that actually everything's good, and when something bad happens, it's like, oh, this is only temporary. It will mm-hmm. reset itself. And then the other one, uh, which their girlfriend had said to him um, about kind of this sort of topic, she said, uh, what was it she said? It was something mm-hmm. like... Um, my life is perfect outside of my head. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's, that's a, really, a good really, really good one. Get her on the podcast. Sounds like we need her on. Yeah, I know, right? But it was a really, really good line because I think so many people, myself included, is one of my worst, worst uh, character traits is I get so inside my own head yeah. and don't and often ignore the positives that are clearly there around me because I go worst case scenario and then when I go to worst case scenario I reinforce worst case scenario Uh because I focused on that's clearly that's an option for what's happening so then instead of being like looking for the evidence of why it's not the case I end up focusing and looking on the The evidence for why it is the case exactly I think Alan Watts refers to it as like mental reverberation like Mm -hmm. as soon as you put that negative thought in the brain it starts ricocheting and it keeps getting stronger 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 Uh stronger stronger but um, I, I was speaking to someone the other day, and they were like, they were they were describing somebody else, and they're like, this person cannot be like knocked off the perch. They're always super happy. They're always super positive. And I think in terms of like choosing your lens, I think you have to kind of rewire yourself to have this sort of level of like chronic optimism in a way. Yeah. And I think if you can always like, there's always going to be issues in your life. There's always going to be problems. But I think it's the way that you reframe them in your mind that you know yeah. what this is always going to make me better or it's going to make the situation better. Like yeah. every time something messes up, you're going to develop, you're going to get better. It's the anti-fragile problem causes yeah. a reaction, which often leads to a development. And I think that, I think a lot of us have to rewire this old uh, patterns in our mind that are always looking for the negative and actually yeah. say, okay, where's the opportunity in this? And I think mm-hmm. you hear it all the time. It's like a common phrase that motivational coaches always say it is literally, if you can change the thinking behind something, as soon as something goes wrong, like, my next thought isn't, oh, shit, this is a bad day. My thought is, okay, how do we fix that? Today, uh-huh. you had an issue with the bus. It's kind of like, oh, well, you can't get here on time. Okay, the next, I'm not thinking, oh, crap, we're going to be late. It's not worth doing the podcast. Let's cancel. It's like, okay, what are the opportunities available? We can mm-hmm. get a cab. I can come to you. Uh-huh. We can. There's always an opportunity. And yeah. I think that the, the more you can actually, every time something in your mind that, you like you say, you think it's going wrong, straight away your next thought should be okay where is the opportunity in this mm-hmm. and I think that way you're just going to make a lot more development as well okay to play devil's advocate though because I, I know all this and but you know me well enough to know that mm. I will very much shift to negative lens yeah. very quickly I'll be I'll be positive until something shakes that confidence yeah. and something shakes that positivity the moment there's doubt that it's a positive then I'll start again confirmation bias going okay well, this is now a negative thing. Yeah. And in, and though I would try and get on the positive, my mind focuses on the confirmation that it's negative, right? Mm-hmm. So I know that I should focus on the positive. And I do try to focus on the positive, but my brain goes, yeah, but there's this negative elephant in the room kind of thing, yeah. like the situation from this morning. Yeah. I'd had somebody suggest a negative thing, yeah. which I hadn't even considered, yeah. And then I was like, no, 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 it's fine. And then two days later, have a freak out about that situation yeah. because my mind's gone, yeah, but there is still this negative thing in the background. So play devil's advocate. How do you hardwire your brain to shift positive? Because I bloody well tried. The thing is, I don't ever believe that it's a rejection of the negative. I think if you were to totally cut out the negative, mm-hmm. you wouldn't know what the positive was. 
Right, okay, yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> so the way that that's what Alan Watts would say, like, how do you know the paper's white unless you've ever seen black? And it's kind of that idea that you have to be aware of the negative, but it doesn't mean you have to choose the negative. It means that you can, you know it's there, but you're also going to have the two sides of the paper. You're going to have the pros and you're going to have the cons and you're going to weigh it out. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, once you have the paper there, you can then say to yourself, well, which perspective of taking now, which perspective should I take now, which is going to serve me? Because one's going to make you feel like shit and one's going to make you just want to stay in your room and crawl in a ball. Mm -hmm. Or the other one's going to say, you know, I can do something about this. Or maybe that gut feeling that something's wrong, like you say, that's a great thing sometimes. It's an alarm bell. It's something's, mm -hmm. something's up. And a lot of the time, if you're feeling it, there is something there. There is a doubt. There is uh -huh. there is a problem there. It doesn't mean you just sweep it under the carpet. Right. That'd be stupid. Dude. That is like, that's bloody like um, super crazy naivety in some ways right. to just think, you know what, I'm just going to think positive. That's the whole... But, but, where, but where's the line? In terms of... In terms of like, so you're saying you don't want to sweep it under the carpet, but like... Are you saying that you should take action on the negative to reinforce the positive? No, or? accept accept it, accept the negative. Yeah. Surrender to the idea that it's like don't get too tied up on the negative. Like don't let it just engulf you. That it immobilizes you. Mm -hmm. Accept that it's there. Surrender that it's a, it's a bad situation, and then use the positive of what you can take in. Switch your brain to okay, what can I take away from this right. now? Yeah, and how do I develop? Because it's there is nothing beneficial mm -hmm. about like dwelling on something I, being I, wrong. Like I literally, agree. it's not going to help in any way. So you kind of have to say, oh well, that really fucked up, or that person doesn't want to be me, or this job I just got made redundant for my job. You can sit there and dwell, and you're like, I'm not saying you should feel like no grief. Sometimes my girlfriend says that to me. She's like, something goes wrong. It doesn't even seem like you register that it's a shit situation. It's like you have no emotion to how crap that was. I'm like, I have emotion to it. But I'm not going to try, like, I'm not going to, like, let it kill me. I can, like, grieve about it for a little while in my mind. But I'm like, well, this isn't helping. This has made me feel worse. And now I'm thinking of everything else that could go wrong. Right. Rather than saying that moment, this is shit. This is wrong. Where's the opportunity? What has this and now allowed me to happen? Like, as I say, the whole me uh, starting on my entrepreneurship sort of journey came from a negative. Me going traveling with my girlfriend and her falling off the curb and breaking her ankle. Right. But I could say, well, bloody hell, I just quit my job two weeks ago and I was meant to be travelling, now it's over. But something amazing came out of it. So I think it's, it's you do have to just... <laughs> to be, like, living, alive human beings, you literally have to thrive, and that thrive and that energy mm -hmm. comes through that optimism and believing that things could be better, I think. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I just think what I'm trying to trying to get out is that, like, you can... What I'm saying, I guess, is, like, I listen to loads of podcasts. I know, I know the, I have an understanding of, of what we're trying to say with this episode of, like, think positive and be positive and put the, put a positive filter on things as opposed to a negative filter. But my point is, and where I sometimes struggle, is that though I'm aware of it, it's still very difficult to execute sometimes. Yeah, but then I would, I would go and look into more aspects than my thinking. Right. I would go into looking at more of a holistic approach to myself. Is okay. is my thinking faulty because my health is faulty? Right. Is my thinking faulty because my relationships are faulty? Is my thinking faulty because, um, I don't know, just different... I'm surrounding myself with negative people. I think yeah. a lot of the time you, you are... Your body and your mind is in an environment that's in this show. That's our body. Right. And I think that there's so many aspects holistically that allow us to have better thinking patterns. I mean, I've been like doing this veganism thing recently. And if you listen to a lot of vegan, like people talking about veganism, they say that they suddenly got these mood, these optimism. I'm not saying everyone has to do a vegan diet or anything like that. But I'm just saying they, they talk about like certain energies you're putting into your body. You're putting in alive, fresh fruits. What kind mm -hmm. of thoughts is this creating you to have? I know that's a totally different tangent to maybe want to go on to. But I do think it's not just about the thoughts, it's about the environment you're in. If right. you're in a place you don't enjoy, if you're in a, I don't know, if you're eating things that are attacking your body rather than right. making your body alive, these have an effect on your thinking patterns. It's okay. not just, okay, I'm going to think positive now. What if your body does not well, that, have the energy? Well, that's kind of what I'm to... saying. Like, it's not, it's not enough just to be able to say, yeah. oh, well, you know. I know I should think positive, therefore yeah. I'm thinking what if positive. You do, what if your body doesn't have the nutrients to create right. the chemicals to feel positive? What if you're not meditating? What if you're not breathing properly? What if you're holding yourself wrong? Like 
these all are all factors in your happiness and the ability to choose a certain way of thinking. Okay. So I do think it's way more holistic, but it has to start from that thought initially. Mm-hmm. But it's the whole thing because the feeling good and being healthy allows you to think better and think better makes you make better decisions about what you want to eat and how you want to conduct right. yourself. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a good place to have a break. So we'll come back in just a mo. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of delivered to you it kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also... They're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Okay, so we're Ooh, back. I needed a breather. I needed some more after that rant bomb. This is, uh, this is much more intense than I was expecting. Thank God I had the coffee this morning. But, <laughs> but good. I think it's good. Um, so we're talking about choosing your lens. <laughs> we're going to have like a little price. Ping! <laughs> <laughs> Just a 9.95. Oh, no, 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 let's, let's not. <laughs> um... So, yeah, so we're talking about choosing your lens and about having positive versus negative um, in terms of when you're looking and putting a filter through in terms of looking at a situation and things like that. Why it's better to go always go the positive and negative. But, I mean, do you know what? You've probably heard that so many times anyway. So mm-hmm. we kind of, we've broken it down a little bit more and we're kind of to challenged to make it less things. wanky. Yeah, more just like... Rose tint your life, it's not about that. Yeah, it's just more about the way the mindset that you're using to look at things mm-hmm. um and one thing i i kind of did want to talk about that i know is is an issue that i have and i think that's why i always go to worst case scenario i think ultimately this is the issue i have is um expectations and i mean we've talked about this loads just you and i um but like having the expectations and putting so much weight on certain things that actually um you end up doing a self-fulfilling prophecy because you're kind of putting so much weight on expectations that are not guaranteed and never were guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed, exactly. And so you're acting on certain expectations on what you want out of something. Um, and actually sometimes, in fact, almost every time, the best thing to do is actually just completely let go of those expectations. I mean, I've got so many Star Wars quotes running through my head at the moment, but one that actually does... Uh, sum it up for you he does really sum it up he's uh, he what, uh, attachment attachment leads to jealousy uh, and the shadow of greed that is mm-hmm. from Yoda nice. and I think that's, it's very true it's just like if you get to, to attach to an outcome of something you then end up uh, reacting in a negative way because you're so attached to the outcome and whether that is jealousy um, I mean that's specifically in terms of talking about a relationship but um you know even if it's about career you know and you've got somebody that's doing what you want to do and you're like oh i want to be there and then they hit that mark before you do it's very easy to slip into the a jealous situation and then you're not actually working on peak because you're then turning you're working based on the outcomes that you haven't got that somebody else has got and then it becomes about them and not about you and then everything changes and, and, and the action you put into place changes. So I think it's just really, really important not to put too much weight. Obviously, we've all got hopes and dreams and all that all that jazz, but you don't want to be so attached to what that outcome is going to be mm-hmm. that actually you end up paralyzing yourself and, again, self-fulfilling prophecy and actually self-sabotaging because it's not going in the direction that you want it to go. It's almost like that be like water thing again and cool. just let it let it take take it take you where it's going to take you I yeah think. i think there's a great book i read and it is the idea i think it's called letting go the pathway to surrender and i think that 
people would have a lot more happiness and probably a lot more be a lot more stress free mm. if they kind of let go of certain expectations upon themselves. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to be the best uh, dad in the world. You don't have to be the perfect uh, partner. You don't yeah. like as long as you know that you're trying to be and you're moving towards that. But you're not saying I'm not going to be happy until I've got this thing. Right. I think the expectations kill people off so yeah. much because you put so much pressure on yourself that that's why people procrastinate. That's why people never start a business is because they're so afraid that they're not going to be right off the bat. Yeah. And I think the minute you can just let go of the outcome, everybody's talked about this as well. I've heard so many different ways of putting it. Like you've got quotes in Star Wars, lots of speakers. I know Philip McKern's a massive fan of this. It's kind of like let go of the need to um, know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think the relief you have when that happens, when you're doing it because it's just fun and this is what you how you want to right. conduct yourself, yeah. pressure's off massively and you can yeah. definitely get a lot more done. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, and it's, I'm going to kind of bring it up because I know you've put it in the notes, yeah. some, although I can't see it now. Have you deleted it? <laughs> Which one are you looking for? I think you've de- you I can't have delete. deleted it. Maybe I didn't copy it in. Oh, no, it's from the other episode. Oh, is it from the other episode? But yeah, I think yeah. I think it's also yeah, yeah, true I here. was literally going to pop it up, actually. Okay, pop it up, because it's your quote. Oh, well, it's not it's your not quote, but quote. you. But it's one that you, you've you said so many times today already that it just kind of feels like it, it, you want to say it today, it's, so I'm letting you say it. Thank you very much. <laughs> this has literally been like my mantra to like probably everybody I speak to in the last few weeks, even my girlfriend's had a bit of stress with her job and mm-hmm. kind of like getting started. And like, I think... I'm going to tell you what it is. Basically, I've been saying to people, just remember that you are just like a fart in the wind, like in the grand scheme of this whole universe. Like you're so insignificant Mm -hmm. that you're just a blip, like you're going to be here today and gone tomorrow. And I think um, Daniel Priestley puts it um, really nicely as well. He says, most of us might get 80 laps around the sun. That's all you're going to get. And so it's kind of like, stop. (laughs) Wow, that's yeah, quite a... It is that, that kind of stoic. A, think about yeah. death. Meditate on death. Like, you're yeah. so insignificant. Your time yeah. here is very, very small. Like, it, the little things that you are, like, worried about today, when you're at 75, you're going to be like, fuck, I should have just done that thing. You think mm-hmm. The regret's going to kill you. It's gonna That regret's going to make you feel bad enough. So yeah. it's like, I think, every moment, if you haven't... It's not like YOLO, live every day like your last. It's more just, you know what... If you can have the choice to live the way you want today, it doesn't have to be like completely the way you want, but you're doing things in the way you want. Yeah. Or you might be doing a little side gig or creating or something like that. Mm-hmm. I just don't hold off ultimately. Yeah. Because like I say, you are a fart in the wind, you'll be gone tomorrow. And yeah. who knows? You don't want to regret things. I think regret is probably one of the worst things ever. And I love yeah. how Gary Vee says he loves talking to old people. Yeah. Because they are full of certain full regrets. Of regret. Yeah. And it's kind of like you sat down with one old man and or one old woman and spoke about what they wanted from life and whether mm-hmm. they went after it, they'll probably say they didn't and they yeah. wish they did. That's one thing that I can say that I am very proud of my mindset on this is um, I if I want something, I will go for it. Even often at the against the advice of my peers because I'll just be like, well, look, I want this and it's a positive mm-hmm. that I want it, so I'm going to go for it. Um and, and I think that's partly because of that. And I think there's... I, it's funny because you've made me just go straight to Steve Jobs' commencement speech. Yeah. And one of the things that he says is... And it's, it's, it's probably the thing that completely changed the way I think about how I'm moving forward with my career and everything else. And um, he says that he used to get up in the morning, he used to look in the mirror and he used to say to himself, if today was my last day, would I do what I'm about to do today? Mm-hmm. And if the answer was no too many times in a row, he'd make Switch a change. Again, he'd yeah. make a change. And I think that's such a, a positive thing to think about. It's just like at the end of the day, our time here is fleeting. So you may as well go after what you want because at the end of the day, you might turn around tomorrow and find out that you've got, pff, I know it's morbid, but you've got a month left. Yeah. You know, you could find that out. And, and it's like, will you feel like your time has been wasted? Yeah. And you don't really want to be in a position ever where you feel like your time was wasted. It's funny, actually. I was listening to um, a podcast yesterday and they were talking about um, Kenny Baker, R2-D2, the actor Mm -hmm. who brought R2-D2 to life. And uh, rest in peace, Kenny Baker. Um, And they were saying, like, like he he had such a fun 
fun, well-lived life. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, so obviously we're mourning him. He's like, but you can't be too sad because he had a damn good life. Yeah, he's going to say he went for it. He yeah, exactly. It. And then, and it just made me think and I was sitting there going, wow, like if I went tomorrow, would I be able to say the same? And I was like, oh, no, not really. So I was kind of like, okay, I've got to step it up a notch. And I think it's such an important thing just to remind yourself of your own mortality. Yeah. I think we've got a blog post on that. I think well. we probably have, yeah. I do think we have a blog post now. I have to dig that out. We'll link into it. Another thing which we've got on the point, here, obviously we're coming closely to the end soon, is this idea of having pronoia instead of paranoia. Like paranoia right. is the storm in the lens. Right. But um, I heard it on a podcast as well, someone saying about pronoia, and that's more like that chronic optimism, that's the sun. Uh -huh. I think you should try to get in that mindset of actually that everything's working in your favour. Like the world wants you to flourish because you're flourishing and doing something that you really want to do actually makes others flourish. Right. So you might be the actor on stage, but that, whatever you might, uh, the feeling you put into the audience helps them flourish in what they are doing. Right. And so actually if everybody's living that way, you don't have to be, somebody could love doing accounts and does it in a perfect way which helps everybody else flourish because the business carries on. So it's not, you don't have to be arty to help yeah. other people flourish. But when you're living, doing things you enjoy and you're happy, literally everybody around you benefits and it's a yeah. growing and I think we have to understand I think um, I, heard it, I put another quote up the other day and it was um, by Bruce Lipton and I think he was saying like evolution is not competition it's cooperation and I think that's the idea that actually yeah. we grow when we're in our happiest state doing the things we love and it actually we're made in a network of people we're all a bunch of you look to us under a they say when you look under like a microscope you see all the little cells but we mm -hmm. are little cells we are all entwined and if one's working well, the rest start working well and it keeps growing. Yeah. And I think that that's what we have to understand. I think that is sort of the next wave of consciousness is understanding mm -hmm. that when we're happy, everybody around us grows and we develop mm -hmm. and we come up with better ideas and it keeps, that's just part of the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I think if you zoomed away, I think even Bruce Lipton said, if you zoomed away from the earth from millions of miles away, we yeah. would just be little, a little, another earth next to another earth, another little set. Uh -huh. And it's kind of... The world is built up in those little in connect, like little connect connectivity, really. So, yeah. and that's going even broader. But yeah, we've already gone woo woo, so much. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I think in all honesty, like as you were talking just then, it's like kind of made me reassess everything that I've been thinking about a lot recently, and has kind of put it in a new frame of mind already. So that's pretty damn good. I think I I was thinking I I think I might have to have this episode kind of like not on speed dial, but the equivalent of speed dial for a podcast. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I genuinely think it's 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 good just to remind yourself of this stuff every now and then because a lot of this stuff, again, as I kind of alluded to in the first half of the episode, like, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I already know. Yeah. But I it's, think, I think it's good said, just yeah. to, like, have a reminder that you probably do need to reassess things and look at things through a different lens. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> see what I did there. Um, yeah, and I, I just think it's a really good, good kind of practice just to kind of when you, particularly when you are in a position where you're feeling incredibly negative, yeah, just whack this episode back on, just whack it back on and just think about what we've talked about through almost through the lens of your situation yeah. and, and, and kind of relate what we've said to how you're dealing with your situation and hopefully you'll come out with a, a more positive viewpoint. And I, and I do think that when you are in that negative mind, what it does, it actually kicks you into your own head it yeah. makes it all about you oh, and how yes. the world's all about you and oh, how yes. it sucks for you and how oh why aren't I getting everything I want and I think that's a big problem because as soon as you can flip it and say you know what my the success I want is not for me is actually it's a double benefit if I could be successful it's going to help others because I'm going to influence them yeah so it's like the podcast I get a lot of pleasure out of it but to get someone else to listen to it who may go and do something they want to do doesn't mean that I might never know that but yeah. it feels good to know that and it's got a double double edged benefit whereas I think when people are living in a stress or a fear or an angry state yeah it's very quick to go into your own head because you're trying to self uh, pres preservate pres self pre self preserve self-preserve whatever the wording is but that's what you're trying to do when you're in a fear state because yeah. you're kind of like suddenly protection how do I keep myself alive and so yeah. you stop looking at the bigger picture and that's why sometimes to remember that you're a fart in the wind in the grand scheme of things does give you that new lens ultimately yeah definitely I agree okay oh, great is there uh, anything else we should just touch on before we end I want you to throw in that Alan Watts quote okay 
because I think that's such a good little... It is pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. It takes a little bit of thinking about. Do you want to read it? Because I've read a few quotes. Okay, okay. So this Alan Watts quote, quote, and you know what? Actually, Alan Watts is such a good person to go to if you're kind of feeling a bit like, oh, I don't really know how to think about this situation. Because he's very much, he's kind of like positive thinking, but it's not like positive thinking. It's just like, here's another way to think about things. Here's a reassessment of, his, I'm going to challenge you on your views. I, I think he's like a philosophical piss taker because he literally makes you think that you think that you've got such problems and then he just smashes them and makes them yeah. seem like comedy. Yeah, yes, that's exactly it. So it's not like motivational, positive thinking thing. It's kind of like, a, I'm just going to completely destroy your current view and rebuild it into something better. That you might even laugh at and make it, it, may, it makes it lighter. Yeah, yeah. I find. Um, and this little quote, it's going to take you some thinking, but... Just think about it. Sit on it for a few minutes. Trap and trapped are one. I think it's so good. So mm-hmm. good. I'm just going to let you read into that what you will. Do you want to say that one more time? Trap and trapped are one. So we're not going to break that down. Not going to break it down. Out. I'm just going to let you mull that over for yourself and find what you need to find from it. Um, yeah. Right. I think that's I it. I think that's a great place to wrap up. So um, thanks very much, guys. Honestly... I think if you probably know somebody that could do with listening to this episode, I know I could I could do with listening to this episode, even if I do say so myself. But it's just talking about things has made me reassess my own mindset, just talking it out, recording this episode for you guys. So if you've got somebody that you think could do with listening to this episode, please share it. Like we're, We've even made T-shirts about this. That's how much we think it's important. Um, the only other t-shirts we got are the standard powerful nonsense t-shirts which you can also get from powerfulnonsense.com forward slash gear just saying but like we think this is really important so um, please share it with anybody that you think could do with it please leave a comment if if you found this helpful or if you want to spark a debate or anything about that please do leave a comment either on the page on youtube or um, twitter facebook etc 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 and hit that subscribe button we would really really appreciate it oh and iTunes reviews five stars above. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks very much, guys. We'll catch you next time.